and good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Family Life, A Catholic Vision. Well, of course, as you would know, you might not have seen us, you know, a, a live show, I should say, for quite a while, but we're back now and we're very happy to be back as well. So upon, you know, when you first, the show first came on, you would have seen a quote taken from Amoris Leticia and it read, desires, feelings, emotions, all have an important place in married life. They are awakened whenever another, another becomes present and a part of a person's life. So this is just to give you a little insight about what we have in store for you today. So today's theme is called Let's Talk Marriage. Now, of course, you would know June month, July month, August, September are all times you see where people get married. You see all the albums, you get all the invitations, and that is a married, it's, it's when everybody gets married during that time period. So we just thought to ourselves, well, hmm, maybe we could take this and we could make an opportunity out of it. But let's talk marriage. Let's talk about some of the things that people experience, you know, when they're married for either one to five years or even 10 to 15 years. It's just basically um, situations where we have two very special guests going to share some information on and you know really give you also some insight on how it is you know um we're just gonna have a discussion not how just a discussion so um i would like to introduce to you my guests tonight and they are father matthew agbir and nicholas Vossen. welcome guys good evening, to the Laura. show thank you and good evening yes yeah, so can you both give me, well, one at, one at a time, of course. You don't be all too eager. As you can see, viewers, it's me against them today. Not really against, but, wow. you know, we have a little, yeah. <laughs> the lady and two gentlemen here sharing information on marriage. So let's see how this goes. So can you give us some information on our background and, you know, you? Uh, you? Well, I am Father Matthew Ragbeer, and... I am parish priest in the cluster of San Grande, Toko and Coriel, the spiritual director and theological advisor to the Family Life Commission. <laughs> what else do you want to know? <laughs> oh. I do a lot of work in marriage and family. You know, yes. my, my studies are in that area. Okay. So yes. And a member of Living Water Community. Of course. Of course. Yes. And you know, one of the <laughs> things that I must say is, just to throw in something from your comments, mm -hmm. is that yes, you know, it would have been lovely if Nicholas and his wife could have been here. <laughs> yes, you know, um, or you and your fiance could have been here. Yes. That would have also been lovely. Maybe next time. Next, Maybe next time, time, definitely. But praise God, here we are. Yes. And Nicholas. And I am Nicholas Bosa. I am a counselling psychologist and original pain therapist. I've been doing this for quite some time, and it is wonderful helping people move on through challenging uh, situations that they may come across. And um, I've only been married now 39 months and two days. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Shout out nice. to my favorite wife, Gina. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, b before the show, I must share with the guests that, um, the audience, sorry, that um, I was telling Nicholas, Gina would have loved to be here because she is, she would. she's always very excited about everything Nicholas gets involved in. She's his number one supporter. My number one cheerleader, correct. Yes, and I must say I am taking notes because as Father mentioned, I am engaged to a wonderful man. And um, <laughs> I am going to be taking some notes today because marriage is a lifetime and a wedding yes. is just one day. That's right. That's right. The yeah. Pope says that in a more yes. 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 yes, he does. I actually read it, um, read a part where he says, you know, don't spend too much and be too glamorous on your wedding day really try to save that essence for when you're married yeah. you know? and you know quite often people complain about the cost of getting married mm -hmm. getting married doesn't cost a lot mm -hmm. the party after the wedding is right. what yes. costs a lot yes. of money yes and that's where we kind of lose focus a little bit mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. so i mean and i think losing focus is essentially that happens in marriage and that's why today with me and my two guests will be talking about marriage so let's bring on situation number one, guys. Let's read. So we have a situation coming in from Grenada. And um, if I didn't mention, um, thank you for all our viewers in Barbados, Grenada, and St. Vincent. The marriage situations you see here have been taken from persons throughout the region, which of course, marriage happens everywhere, situations happen everywhere. 
So the first situation is taken from Grenada. Hello, I'm from Grenada, and my husband and I are married for 13 years. When we first got married, we used to go to all the festivals, especially pure Grenada Music Festival. We used to do everything together. As time went on, I got new interest and an advancement in my career, and I honestly am starting to lose interest in my husband. Quite frankly, he bores me, and everything else seems so fascinating. We have a child together, and I want my marriage to work. What can I do to bring back the spark? So yeah, take a chew at well, it. I think before we even speak about the What's situations happening? that are presented before us. One of the things we need to note is this is not a therapy session. Oh, Correct. yes. And mm -hmm. uh, we are not given advice. We mm -hmm. are discussing what is presented to us. Right. Um, and therefore, you know, don't read into it and say, oh, this is what I should do because there's, there's so much more involved that we don't know. This is just a piece of paper we've been handed mm -hmm. with four scenarios. And, and even that, you know, it, it takes much more of understanding the person and who is involved and... I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think a blanket statement would be don't replace one on one interaction with a therapist mm -hmm. or another helper with what we give you here today. Okay. We're just discussing yeah. possibilities. Julie noted, and I'm sure our guest Julie notes that as well. Yes? So now that we've gotten into that little disclaimer, can you share on how it is, you know, in a situation like this? Just share um, what. Sure, let me take a swing at it. Sure, you go ahead. Sure. Well, we note a couple of things. One, they used to do everything together. Mm -hmm. And she has had, and this is clearly from the wife, she's had a change in her job I, and some advancement in her job. And she's and got new interests. I assume that means some sort of training or mm -hmm. improvement in her educational standing. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems that the husband has not kept pace. Mm -hmm. This is a fairly common situation. Mm -hmm. It's quite often the reverse. But this is a fairly common situation. And I think what she needs to remember is the person you married is still there. The person you fell in love with is still there. Maybe you need to resume doing things together. Mm -hmm. Share mm -hmm. some of your interests with him. Pique his interest. Mm -hmm. He may find, he may provide an interesting point of view on some things you already find interesting and you all will find some common ground again. Mm -hmm. So definitely don't give up and bringing back the spark takes work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it seems that you'll let life get in the way a little bit and mm -hmm. the spark may have dwindled so it's going to take a little work to re-spark it mm -hmm. but it's definitely worth it definitely yes and one of the things that i, I presume are these catholic contexts or mm -hmm. christian contexts mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. because that that also makes a difference of yes. Course it does, yes um because for us marriage is forever no, it's, yes. yes. It's this free gift of the person given to each other that is forever, that is complete, and that is faithful. And, and so, picking up on the last point Nicholas made, that it requires constant work. Not because you fell in love with this person at whatever age and you began this journey together, that's going to last. Love requires nurturing. You know, we spoke about the quote you used before about the emotions, the passions, the desires, the, what, what they, they speak of as the effect, you know, the affective dimension of the person, requires work because we grow and we develop. And therefore, the love itself is not, if people are at 13 years old at the same level that they were when they were just married, we have a big problem. Yes. Because you have two persons who are growing, and therefore, they have to work hard on their relationship. And that requires, you know, nothing other than working really, hard. yeah, mm -hmm. working hard. Uh, you know, there's this quote we, we use in the um, marriage prep program. Yes. You know, about, are you going to use that? Yes. Well, no, no, no. That's okay. from my points to ponder. Okay. But I did walk with my book. <laughs> so, yes. There's, there's this wonderful quote about, you cannot expect to get a great marriage bearing much fruit in your lives when you don't make time to pray, to talk, to play, mm -hmm. to build life together, you know. And, and the, the analogy they give is that it's like trying to glue fruit on a tree when you don't prune manure, water, mm -hmm. care for it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it requires much work. Boredom, you know, she speaks about boredom. Yeah, boredom. Boredom. Mm -hmm. boredom is really a condition of the person. Huh? Yeah. The person who says, I'm bored, 
it's more a reflection of themselves mm -hmm. yes. than the situations around them. And therefore, it's really an examination of what is there that I am doing that I need to look at differently? What is there, you know, and perhaps it may be part of middle-age crisis. You know, middle-age crisis, it may right? be. 13 years, yeah. it might be, yes. Yes, yeah. 13 years. <laughs> so, or whatever is going on with the child or the husband. And, and you know, there's so many things that yes. you could speak about that mm -hmm. if they're not dealing with small things, then it becomes big things. Yeah. But all that's part of pruning and caring for it as it grows. Yeah. The relationship requires work. Right. Yeah. Correct. I have to admit, in doing the marriage prep program, which I did um, with Father Matthew and a team of other persons, one of the things they did tell us is that marriage takes work. It takes a lot of hard work every day. You, just like you would get up and take care of yourself and make sure that when you leave the house that of course you're in good standing order it's the same way it will take for your marriage that you have to put in the work in order to reap the benefits of mm -hmm. what my parents who are married yep. for 33 years mm -hmm. are reaping right now you know okay. so um well thank you for sharing that and from that we take hashtag hard work Yes, Father? <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Hard, work. hard work. Hard work. Right. So hard we're work. moving on to situation number two. Already. Already. <laughs> Already. Look at that. Okay. Yes. Wow. Situation number two, um, taken from someone in Barbados. Mm -hmm. And it reads, we are an interracial cu married couple, um, married for 12 years with one son. Recently, I cheated on my wife with a younger woman, and I told her, I was married before in which I have two children, and this is my second marriage. I really want this marriage to work. What should I do? Yeah, so this is a toughie to me. This one seems toughy, but I mean, it, it is happening, and I mean, I'm, I wouldn't even want to imagine what that is like, but it's happening to women and to men. And to men. Mm -hmm. You know? And what can you share? Mm. Okay. Well, <laughs> first of all, you know, it, the first line, it begins with the sense of we are an interracial couple. Yes. You know? So that already speaks something about the beach and reality. Mm -hmm. That is not as evident to us here in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. You know, that um, being a mixed, as, as well, mixed races mm -hmm. matters to them. Yeah. Um, yes, because they But the they person to actually say that. Yes, you know? they, yes, they said that, that they were interracial. Yeah. So... That, that's one part of it. They are married for 12 years. Again, we see this 13 years was the first one, the mm -hmm. second one is 12 years. Um, I cheated on my wife, you know. There's, there's this admission of guilt mm -hmm. um, and, and of culpability uh, with a younger woman, and I told her. Yes. Now that line, there's so many things you could go into with that alone. The, the, what looking for in a younger woman, you know. Is, it, is the person, is he in a middle-aged crisis? Again, we could talk about. or. Is there something that has caused a fracture within the relationship that is leading them to leading him to look outside? You know, the grass is always green on the other side. Um, but it is really, you know, and that, that's why I started asking you know, if these are all Christian or Catholic contexts. Mm -hmm. Because for him to be, when, when we say this is a second marriage, did he get an annulment? Is this a civil marriage? You know? Right. Um, all those become that's issues really we have to, right, to look at. To, to yes. look at. Because Marriage for us is forever. You know, hello, high water, we'll find a way. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, there are circumstances that happen where, yes, abuse and stuff like that create circumstances where you of really necessity. have to look and see is this truly, is love there? But the fidelity, the, the lack of fidelity that has happened would have caused a huge rupture in, in, the, in the marriage. Um, and if it has happened once, you know. Well, yeah, it happened once, and I mean, we're not too sure what happened in his first marriage, his but this is his second correct. marriage, and you know, um, he, he wants how he wants to fix it though, and and that's the thing. You see, what does he want to fix? Yeah, what what you see, it's your sense of being faithful. Right. Your sense of being faithful and working things through, stick to itiveness. Right. As, as we sometimes say, you know, is is very important here, mm -hmm. and if if he's not cultivating that virtue in his life. You know, then it will always be when things get tough. Let's look you run away. elsewhere and run away. Yeah, yeah when things so get tough. So I would jump in and say, taking yeah. up from where Pat Matthew left off, if you want to make your marriage work, stop cheating on your wife. Right. Yeah. Grow yeah, up. Yeah, that's it. 
It grew that's up. Right. That's right. That's the grew reality. Up. Grew and that up. is what I can appreciate. Exactly. Yes. Stop it. Definitely. You know, this, this, um, the Pope speaks about that in, in Amor Satitsa, and it's one of the challenges we have as a society, not just here in Trinidad, but worldwide, where we are more and more emotionally immature, you know, yeah. and effectively immature, and sexually immature. So that, and, and we, I'm not saying it's them out there, it's all of us that experience this because culturally, mm -hmm. we're in a situation where we are not maturing in the way we should. Yeah. You know, you might be growing up physically, but our emotions, our affect, our ability to endure, to settle, mm -hmm. we're afraid of those things as a culture. The culture is telling you, put it off as long as possible, yeah. and so you wait till your 30s, your late 30s. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by then um, you figure out something. Yeah, that. you know, so it's, it's growing up. Well, I must share with you, when Brent and I got engaged, when we first got engaged, one of our friends who is pretty social and really out there and stuff like that, um, he goes out and he's pretty social, he has, you know, he knows what's happening on the outside, um, told us when we went out, um, well, they know no one is faithful anymore. Everybody has somebody on the outside. That's and I have to admit, true. I have to admit, I was a bit like taken aback mm -hmm. because Part of it is true, but I don't want it to be our truth. Right. You know, I don't want it to be our truth. Well, we have those lies all the way from secondary school where we're told mm -hmm. everybody's doing it, everybody's not doing it. That's yeah. right, everybody's not doing it. And that not is not it. true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody doesn't have somebody on the outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe in his circle. Right. Mm -hmm. But that speaks more to his circle than, than anybody, anybody else. else. And yeah. sometimes we want to tell ourselves these things to comfort ourselves. To yeah. justify our to bad justify behavior. To justify the bad behavior, yeah. yeah. Or to justify the bad behavior. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the the truth about this society we live in is that there are many temptations out there. You know, um, we we have worked with many different groups of couples at the Family Life Commission and through different things we do, and and you hear them saying you don't even have to stand up there. You know, this is a a, a gentleman. Um, they speak of a woman throwing themselves at you and knowing you're married. Married. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and saying, well, when you're, you're like prime, prime bait, you know? Yeah, typically when you're <laughs> yes, married. Yes, typically you know? when you're married, because it means you're a good man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that, oh, yeah. okay, right. Well, yeah. honestly, yeah. thank you for sharing that, because I was now going to ask you, why? And you just answered it, because you think you're a good man. Well, you should answer that. <laughs> well, the thing is, the thing is, no, the, I mean, thank you for sharing that, Nicholas, because it <laughs> yeah. was like a epiphany moment for me just now when you said that. But it is true, like when you're married, you're one of the good ones, and if I could... You've settled down, yeah. you've grown up, you're responsible, well, you, know, you know how to pay bills, stuff. that Correct. kind of thing. Yeah. Wow, well that is quite... I mean, mind you, they, they, it's also inappropriate the way sometimes they do it to priests as well. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. But that's a whole other story. I remember <laughs> talking to okay. a seminarian who said his, the most dates he had was when he was in the seminary. Right, right. <laughs> but that just, is another show the way we could bring <laughs> yes. up. what we yeah. could do for the audience is you know that's another show for another, another maybe thing. another show on trinity you know but, for us to deal with but that's this this too. encouragement to cheat you know and, and thinking it's okay you know we don't know the circumstances under which it happened you know but that's why i'm saying this three lines is so yeah. little it's to so really little. speak to this reality yes. um but what i can say is this that if there's a second marriage and Again, we don't know if he got an annulment. We don't oh, know what the situation mm -hmm. there is. Um, because if he has not gotten an annulment, he is still married to that first person. Right. If it happened in the well, church. that's a logistical part of it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, in order for marriage to work, he has to, he has to be willing to, again, work hard. Work yes. hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I think here, yeah, you know, if he really does want this to work, learn the lessons from the first time. Yeah. Go find somebody, find a counselor mm -hmm. yeah. to help work it out because infidelity is not an indicator that the marriage is broken. Mm -hmm. It's been broken already. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's just a red flag that it's a serious mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. Right. Already in his mind and his heart, you know, his mind and his yeah. heart are elsewhere. Right. Infidelity so. begins with the conversation yeah. and the intimacy, not the sexual activity. Yes. Okay. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing. It's a a, a lot more than I think our audience bargained for for the first part <laughs> of the show. Um, it truly is very interesting. But counseling is, as Nicholas mentioned, part of what we offer at the Family Life Commission. Now we're going to go to a short break where we're going to show you what we offer at the Family Life Commission. And if you would like to get um, more information on these services, 
you can always tune into our website or even at the runners at the bottom of, of, of the show. So check out what we have to offer. vision if you've just tuned in we've been having such an informative segment so far I would just like to reintroduce my guests once again for those who are now tuning in we have father Matthew Ragbeer and we have mr. Nicholas Boston here with us Nicholas is a therapist and father Matthew Ragbeer is a priest so <laughs> um, so a lot of information sharing here so if you're now tuning in or if you did not turn the channel thank you and thank you um, we have um, situations that we're dealing with and these gentlemen here sharing information on particular situations which were taken from people throughout, throughout the islands. So we're going to move on to situation number three. You know what I was thinking? Yeah, Laura, go ahead, tell me. That maybe I should say this because many people, sometimes I go to do talks on marriage and family and they say, but you're a priest, you know, how mm -hmm. could you talk to us about this? Mm -hmm. um, so just to share that, well, first of all, you journey with many, many couples. Yes. I mean, we just spent three, I spent three months journeying with 30 engaged couples, one of which was <laughs> Lauren and Brent, and, um, and, and Nicholas and his wife, wife were on the wife. team helping, yeah. you know, um, and that's not the first time we've done that. And we also, and then we also work with many couples at various levels uh, from within whatever problems they face and, and at all different stages of marriage. But also that my, my studies in Rome were in marriage and family. And studying with us were actual couples you know, mm -hmm. in our classes who you develop great friendships with and stuff like that. So, yeah. Well, that was more... And we're all from families. Exactly. Yeah? We're, we're all from, all from families. families. And with that, bring so many experiences, yeah, yeah. you know, to share and stuff like Definitely. that. And especially for those who, you know, know now got married or probably married for a little while mm -hmm. or probably about to get married you know we always bring experiences to enlighten and enrich any situation That's but right. thank you for sharing that father sure we will enjoy that you know knowing Praise that God. you studied <laughs> and stuff and all the networking that you've done throughout Praise the um, time there um right so we're moving on to jamaica and this is a pretty interesting situation i must say We've been married for 20 years. Two years ago, I decided to renew my faith in God and asked my husband to attend church with me. He refused. Within the last year, every little argument we had, we, we have, he hits me and complains about my attendance at church. He also drinks all the time. I don't want to leave him because we have children together and he's the only man I've ever been with. Do I have to make a decision between my church and my husband? Please help. So yes, yeah. the ball is on the table. <laughs> I think I'll jump in and let yes. Father Matthew. Yeah. Um, do I have to make a decision between my, hu my okay. husband and my church? I really hope not. Mm -hmm. But this physical abuse and what is clearly his budding alcoholism, if it isn't full-blown alcoholism, mm -hmm. is a serious problem. Mm -hmm. That is a very serious problem. And it says that 
she indicated that the abuse, the physical abuse seems to have only started within the last year. So maybe what is left out is that there's a, there was a trigger of some kind, something traumatic may have happened to him. Maybe he lost his job. Maybe someone died. Mm -hmm. Maybe he witnessed something traumatic, um, which tends to trigger this lashing out behavior. Mm -hmm. But we don't know from the information given. I would suggest to her, again, in consult with a professional in her locale, that she needs to find protection for herself and her children. Mm -hmm. Because in almost every single time that there's physical abuse, it spreads from the, the adult partner to the children, mm -hmm. or the children get involved attempting to protect mm -hmm. the person who's being abused. So she needs to treat this very seriously. And if he wants the relationship, he will get the help. It, it's, it's going to be a long road, but nothing's impossible once the husband and wife agree it can be fixed. Right. Mm -hmm. one, one of the interesting things that you hear quite often with couples who come to the church asking for help or advice is that the church is the last option they've taken, yeah. which is unfortunate. You know, the church becomes the first place they go to when they're getting married, but it becomes the last place they go to when they're in difficulty. And when they go to it is when things are really falling apart. Yeah. And, and sometimes, unfortunately, non um, no. not, not able to be saved. You know? mm -hmm. And um, what, because people think you just wave a magic wand and it happens. You know, we've spoken about the hard work that is required. Now, the reason I'm saying that is this, that if you come to the church earlier, then the first signs of abuse or the first signs of misunderstandings that happen can and be difficulty. helped, you know? Yes, and, and preemptive yeah. action. Preemptive action that really helps them examine their lives. And sometimes you need a very honest conversation. There are programs that the Family Life Unit offer. There was one this weekend, Retrovi, for mm -hmm. instance, which is not just for couples who are in distress. It's, it's for marriages. It's a renewal in their married life, and it helps hurt in marriages, you know? But People can go on because in married life, things will happen where you need to find a way forward. And so what you have quite often is this way in which sometimes people don't want help, a kind of macho um, behavior. The, the, the other aspect here is something that you see quite often that, so she goes to church. Mm -hmm. And it, it seemed like she did not for a while because she a said, while. I yes. renewed my yeah. faith in God yeah. and asked my husband to attend with me. Now, from, from a... Christian point of view. You know, it is God's love that helps us in the married life. In fact, uh, you know, it's not to sound uh, theological, uh, but married love takes its strength from that love between Christ and the church, as we read in um, Ephesians, in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And therefore, if we really don't make prayer a part of our lives, then you know, it, it becomes all the more difficult. And I'm not saying that lightly. I'm not saying that from a standpoint that's overly, saying overly religious or anything. But it's true that it is Christ who teaches us to lay down our lives for each other. And a lot of what happens is we are unable to die to self. Die to self, okay, my wife wants to go to Mass, you know. Mm -hmm. Let me die to self and go. And, you know, who knows what had happened there. Die to self in, in so many other ways, you know. Christ teaches us that. Teaches us the faithfulness. Teaches us how to endure and how to give up oneself fully. Mm -hmm. so, so you have that aspect there that is happening. Um, the arguments, the, the hitting, the complaining about church attendance, you know, all that is a sense of, you know, is there real true gift given happening? Yeah. Now, do I have to choose between my husband and my church? The first question I would ask is, is there love there? You know, marriage is built on love and is what is being lived really a marriage? Because love from, a, from a, a theological point of view, and, and, and therefore the theology, the body, etc. Love has this aspect of being free gift. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's willing the good of the other. It's a gift of the presence of the person, and therefore this free, complete, faithful, and fruitful gift. If there's no faithfulness, well, if the freedom isn't there, because there's, for one reason or another, mm -hmm. uh, or any of these dimensions are, are missing, then what kind of love is happening there? 
What kind of marriage is, yeah. is there? And, you know, she calls him her husband, yes, because they are husband and wife. But in reality, what they may be living may not be a true marriage. A true, true, mar a true marriage, marriage, the way it's yeah. meant. And, and in no way is it the way it's meant to be. Yeah. And therefore, I mean, I don't want to make any pronouncements because mm. there's so much we don't know. No, yes. There's so much we don't know yes. in it. Um, his side, her side, and more well, details, of course. So. Well, of course, when that couple seeks counseling, if they do happen to seek counseling, you know, they would be able to... They should. <laughs> Not yeah, no, should. Well, they, they should. should. Right. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, you could say this more than me, you know, but unfortunately, people become accustomed to a lot of dysfunction. Yes. And it becomes normal, it normative becomes for them. It becomes you know? normal, yes. you know? <laughs> one, of, one of the things I don't allow, I don't let my clients get away with too often is saying, in response to how you're feeling or how things are going, normal. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Say, so, well, define what normal is for me. And if normal for you is my husband hits me and is yeah, drinking that, a lot, that's, mm -mm. that's, that's is wrong there. problematic, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and it, it she, in, she gives us a little insight into the relationship when she says, you know, he's the only man I've ever been with, with yeah. mm. indicating the kind of strength of bond mm -hmm. yeah, that yeah. that sexual intimacy has between mm -hmm. husband and mm -hmm. wife, yes. you know, um, and how powerful that bond is that she's willing to put up yeah. with this kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. yep. She's pouring out herself for him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even under these circumstances. Yes. But... But mm -hmm. as Father rightly said, and that's one of the things I learned in marriage prep as well, that a, a true marriage is faithful, fruitful, free, and total. Yes. You know, and that's one, those are four terms that within that program, and of course, we will be taken into our marriage, that that is the essence. And you know, when a company has, um, core responsibility or core values yes. or mm -hmm. um, anything, motto. a motto that they would journey with. Mm -hmm. I think within my relationship, we've come to understand, not fully, but we are getting there to help and of course, you know, father and all the persons that help to um, talk with us and stuff that a marriage has to be free, total, fruitful and faithful. And the next 40 or 50 years of practice that you'll get. Yes, yes. Exactly. And yes 40 and 50 years exactly. of practice, yes, that we yeah. get. So just thank you for you know sharing on that. I know that one when I got that situation, I was like, oh my goodness, how am I going to put this on television? But I realized that this is the reality a lot of households are yes. facing and no longer can yeah. we yeah. shy away as yeah. church from the reality of what's happening because they, they want the yeah. truth from us. I want, I want to share something that also happens, you know. Go ahead. One of the things, um, sometimes when uh, families, uh, so a family, the children grow up and you have an empty nest. You find situations like this evolving. The husband does not want to be home alone. Why are you not here with me? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. um, you find situations where, you know, they, they, they were accustomed living a way that was high paced, hectic, people around. And therefore, I mean, I'm making a stereotypical statement about, about men, but men don't handle loss well, you know? And, and the moving out of children, the changes in life is, is a part of the grieving that is necessary. And they want their wife, they want, you know, why, why is she in church? You know, why, why is yeah, she, why where is she, she not now? Home with me? And they turn to the bottom, especially if they're um, retired, mm -hmm. you know. And have nothing to and distract, have nothing them, to distract the them. And it becomes a crisis moment in their lives. Yeah. And they think that their wife has to have the answer for that, which is also an unfair burden to put upon her. Yeah. Because the answer for that comes from, from you doing your own work as well, recognizing the situation you live in now, etc. So I, I don't know if you. And to well, as that. you would as you would appreciate, Father, that comes a lot from the socialization that men have in the society, where yeah. we yeah. learn very early that big boys don't cry. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that teaches us as men very early on that one, my feelings don't matter, mm -hmm. but that doesn't stop my feelings from happening. Mm -hmm. And if I can't discuss them with somebody, I can't express them. Mm -hmm. I don't get a chance to put a name on it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you can't name it, you can't treat with it properly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So 50 years down the road, all of your kids are gone and all of the little issues that you and your wife swept under the carpet <laughs> because the kids were there to distract you and take up the time, now bubble to the surface because it's just the two of you in the house. Yes. That's right. So we That's fight wow. over <laughs> breakfast. Yes. And yeah. why you put in the 
cups there and right. stuff she's been doing for 20 years and you didn't notice. Wow. You know, it, it makes me think of something we, we use in speaking about um, original nakedness, which is a term from the theology of the body. Right. But the sense that um, as older couples share in, in mentoring sessions, they say sex is not everything, you know? <laughs> and that the, the real nakedness is really understanding each other and trusting each other, growing with each other, opening your heart to each other. And, you know, many times, as you, as you say, you know, what you sweep under starts to bubble up because now with all the distractions gone, you're standing naked before each other once more and you can't hide it. You can't hide it by saying, yep. I have to drop the children at eight and then yes. I have to do this. It Go now becomes, yeah. you know, here it is. We are in front of each other and naked once more, mm -hmm. you know? Naked, yeah. all, all, all our, everything we were trying Sports to hide and, and all our faults exposed. and everything, you know? It's right there yeah. for, for right you to right see. There. And yeah. yep. you know, how do we deal with it? How do we deal with it? But yes, wow. So hmm, I, I think this is a lot of unboxing for us here. I think there are many points that we uh, that you raised just now. And you know, viewers, I know that this show, you're probably wondering, oh my gosh, this might be the only time that you might have access to seeing the show. Because as you can see, the show is carrying a lot of information, but do not worry, we will have it available for you through our website and on YouTube. And you know, in many cases, if you feel like you can always contact us and we can share the information with you and also the numbers um, with you, if you feel like these are people that you would like to speak to about something that's happening within your life, or uh, within your married life. So we're gonna take a short break Right? Not really a short break, but as I spoke about the website, we also would like, we have a video tutorial, a short one, just sharing with you, you know, how you can access our website and many of the resources that um, we have available at the Family Life Commission. So, take it to the ad. To access our website, go to your Google browser type in aflcrc.org, select the link and press enter. It will immediately take you to the Archdiocesan Family Life Commission's website. Welcome. As I scroll down, you will see we have an excerpt from Amoris Leticia on the homepage. We have two videos, one highlighting the work that we've done over a weekend and what we have to offer here at the Commission. As you scroll down, you will see you can subscribe for updates from the Commission themselves, and also you can read the latest edition of the Catholic Engaged Encounters newsletter. If you would like more information on our programs, leave us a message, or you need to make an appointment for counselling, schedule an appointment. As we go down, you would see our featured gallery, and also, you will see some of the videos that we have at the Commission, highlighting the work that we do. As I scroll down, you will see the upcoming events and also the pastoral letter written by Archbishop Joseph Harris. Further down the page, you would have links where you can contact us, you can connect with us, and other links to other pages. If you immediately want to get onto us, leave us a quick contact. At the top of the page, on the menu bar, you will see About, where you'll see our history, our vision and our contact, Common Sense Parenting, The Buzz, Articles, Upcoming Events, Events Calendars here at the Commission, Programs, the many programs we have to offer families, our Ministries and Family Life Unit, and our Media Room. It's as simple as that. We look forward to seeing you here on the website. And if there's anything we can help you with, be sure to contact us. Hi, and welcome back to Family Life, a Catholic Vision. And tonight's show is really something that is whew, blowing me away. Um, I have to admit, you know, as I am journeying towards getting married, a lot of really useful, practical, you know, ways to deal with particular situations are placed on the table, you know, in front of me and, well, my fiance, who's not here, obviously, but um, he will be watching the show. 
And I can't wait. He's probably going to be like, did you know this, this, and this? And I would be like, yes, I was on the show presenting. So <laughs> I would know this, this, and this. So um, we just want to take it to our fourth situation, mm -hmm. right? And this is our Trini situation. And to me, I must say this is, wow. I was like, OK, this is quite interesting because it is so current. The phone has become such a nuisance in my house. My wife, as she comes home, she's on her phone. WhatsApp, Facebook, constantly on her phone. I feel as if we talk more through WhatsApp than in person. No longer do we enjoy time together because she's always on her phone. I must admit, the lack of attention makes outside my marriage more appealing. What can I do to end this tech terror? Tech terror. Can you believe that? Tech, tech terror. terror. You tech. must be horrified by these words because you love tech. <laughs> I love tech. <laughs> love tech. I love technology, yes. Um, right, so as you know, technology is in our homes, not only plaguing our marriages, but it is plaguing our relationships Families with generally. children, mm -hmm. grandparents, my mummy always sends these wonderful prayer messages in the morning that I love so much. But you know, it's much. I know that she's up because of the prayer messages, <laughs> right? So, let's talk about this. Okay. You know, Taktara. I'll let you lead on. Okay, <laughs> sure. The first thing is this: that nothing can replace a person being present to another person. Nothing. And what technology does? Technology, in its in its. It, it makes human life easier. It helps us. It's meant to be used as a tool, not use us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have to wonder who's using who sometimes. But we, we have been replacing the, the value that there is in interpersonal communication in being present to each other, being present and aware of what that means with a WhatsApp message, you know. Um, and I, I know it, and I'm, I'm not saying it in a bubble. I know it in my own life. I feel the intentions in me and in my friends, you know, and those around me, that part of our reality is this. But we have to fight to reclaim the value of two persons. You didn't marry through a phone. You, know? you weren't born through a phone. There, there are human things that are real for us because of who we are, you know, and our need for touch, our need for intimacy. All these things do not happen through a phone. Although an emoticon with a smiley face may cause our hearts to delight. Yes, this person agrees with me or likes me or you know, is agreeing with me. It can never replace the time that we need to be present to each other. And, and so it is working to reclaim that. You know? and, and people get addicted to technology. China has all the, you read it all the time, rehabs for people who are tech. Um, who are addicted to the internet or addicted to technology in one form or another, addicted to their phones. You, you go retreats now and you tell the children, put down their phone, and they want to start crying. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They want to cry. We have, um, we have an unfortunate situation here because, and we're missing a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't know how old this, this couple are. Yes. Yeah. How old these people are. If they have children, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those things will influence what's going mm -hmm. on and put some more color on the particular yeah, situation. Right. But yes, this young lady seems to be addicted to her phone. And you cannot be in a relationship with your phone. Yeah. Yes. It does not hug you back. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. And you cannot replace with, as Father said, an emoticon, the actual interpersonal interaction. Mm -hmm. I can put a smiley face at the end of anything and be crying buckets of tears on the other side of the yeah. phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you going to know that unless you're speaking to me yeah. in person? Mm -hmm. You can't tell that. And it's, it's, been, it's very sad to me to walk around and see the teenagers sitting next to each other, giggling, but not looking at each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know they're sharing information, they're messaging yeah. back and forth. It would be instructive to know how long this has been a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. And if it's, well, it's become a nuisance, but maybe it's just now painful for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But chances are, this has been going on for a little while. Right. Mm -hmm. And it also means there's some dysfunction happening in a relationship. If you, the phone can wedge itself in there, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. it means there's been space created because mm -hmm. there's a vacuum of some kind. Yeah. Something is missing in their intimacy. 
Right. Mm -hmm. We can't tell that from here. Yes. They definitely need to go find somebody and get help. Get help. Well, one of the things that's very interesting with this, with the phone culture that we live in, you know, because. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of us use phones. You know. All the time. Um, all the time. All, all the time. time. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. Mine is right down there. You know? yeah. um, and Mine too. one of the things that's very interesting in, in what is being said here is the need to see the message that comes. Yes. You know, you, you hear people and you say, turn your phone on silent and they put it on vibrate. Um, and they tell you, I just need to, I, I need to hear the pling. I need to hear the, you know, I want to hear that. They need to see this, this drive to, oh, I have to know the itch that they have to scratch to, to well, know, okay, what, what's the latest, you know, what, what's the update? Um, <laughs> you know, father, I, I must, you know, I must, I must share because no couple or no relationship is perfect. Eh? But I will just put a salt on the table since everything there already. You have permission to put it on. Yes, the I do. Yeah. Okay. Right? <laughs> yes, I do. Right? Because this is, I don't know who I might be touching in this situation, but mm -hmm. my message is your message and your message is mine. So that is my fiance's thing. We have a no phone time. When it is we meet up in the evening, we have right. a no phone time. And he explained to good. me, yes, because between a certain hour, no phones, we put it away. But I decided to ask him, okay, why must you be on your phone? He has to check his notifications. Seeing his notifications, it, it, I don't know what it does to him, but he said it just, he's not, he doesn't feel good when he knows that there are notifications that need to be cleared. Right. That, and that I'm actually like, is exactly what's going on. Yeah. yeah. It is very much like an addiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the studies are coming out and saying that the brain chemistry is changing so mm -hmm. that you get the same adrenaline rush yes. that you do from accomplishing something yeah. as you do from checking your messages. Mm -hmm. And the sad it thing is, is, is. is that I suffer with the same thing too, but he doesn't know it until now <laughs> because he's, you know, he's watching the show. But that's how I feel sometimes too. So you, that, you are right, covertly right? checking your so messages so he wouldn't I see you. <laughs> I am, you know, fighting the good fight yeah, and yeah, being yeah. like, you know, honey, <laughs> you could fight it. And I internally am sort of battling. I, when it's a notification comes in, you know, I need to check it. I have a little bit more self-control than he does, but okay. my truth is there. <laughs> but sure. I guess that's subjective. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, we rooting for Brent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have so much more communication and access to each other. But there's much less legitimate and honest communication. Yeah, definitely. Communication has become such a problem. In France, for example, it's now against the law to message your employees after hours with work yeah. and expect a reply. Mm -hmm. It's against the law. It got so bad. Mm -hmm. We should take some notes. We should. Yeah. And this gentleman should, as the husband in the family, take the lead and have a serious conversation with his wife. Yeah. The, the, I mean, the bigger issue in all of this is boundaries, you know. How do we create appropriate boundaries, as I said, that says for relationship, these are the kinds of norms that we need. Um, and we don't cross them. You know, we may, yeah, sometimes you push your foot over the boundary a little bit, but you learn. And, and therefore, how, how do we create, and, and that's a good thing you all did in creating a no phone zone. Yeah. Whether or not you stick to it or not is not a point here. It's the fact that you were, uh, I'm going to use the word emotional intelligence enough to recognize our need for this. It says a certain awareness that, you know, this is a potential problem or a problem or idea that we know and we need to create space where we know we can safeguard our relationship. And you build on that. Yeah. You know? Um, but the, the... I just want to pause you for a second because when it says we took out the phone from when we were eating, right, we took out the going to our phone to... Um, check with notifications. The conversations in reality got a lot shorter. So what we also put into play is this jar of topics that we could talk about that we put in the jar and we just pick from the jar. It could be anything. It could be, um, you know, a newspaper, have a new, it could be anything that we just put in the jar sure. and we pick out the topics because the topics, you're just so used to having your phone that when you put something else in play, it takes a little while to get used to it, so we had to get a supplement to, to make this new thing, put this new thing in because motion. Because unfortunately, that little bit of tech is dumbing us down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's doing all the work for us, it's doing all yeah. the search, it's doing all of the translation, it's doing, 
giving you all of your real and fake news. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so you don't have to comment. You don't have to have an opinion. Somebody's already told you what it is. Yeah. So we're losing the art of conversation. Station. We're losing the art of interaction. And these are very important skills for husband and wife who need to spend a lot of quality time together. together. Or soon to be husband and wife or who haven't even, husband. we're not even married yet, but I mean, we're realizing that, you know, technology plays a big part of both of our lives. And it's yeah. both, we both love technology. So you yeah. can imagine the battle that we face. I mean, most, the average young person does. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, if you, if you even think about, we haven't even gone to Netflix and these sort of things that have oh, kind of wow, taken yeah. over the whole world of, of film and, and movies. Right. But um, one of the things interesting here is, you know, has he had an honest conversation with her? Would also be uh, an interesting yeah. thing to find out. What, what's the kind of conversation that he's had with her about this, you know? And what, has it been a complaint? Has it, or has it been sitting down and saying, could we talk about something? And because that's, the this, this style and the approach used would also you know, because if she's so attached, if the person is so attached to their phone and stuff, how you approach them has to be a way of opening that hand slowly rather than trying to yank it out. Yes. And, and to demean and to make fun of and, you know, mm -hmm. call them Fonella or something. Fonella? So I heard somebody call somebody <laughs> wow, Fonella. Wow, that you know? is quite Fonella. interesting. <laughs> Fonella. Oh, okay. Wow. So. Yes. But um, yeah, that whole technology and the shift of technology and technology is growing like every day. There's always yeah. a new app. There's always something new that you want to learn about. And, you know, sometimes we're guilty of, okay, I prefer to read what's happening technologically wise instead of just uh, having a conversation with my significant other. Yeah, I want, oh, to, I know want to talk with my friends. Who? Beyonce is calling her new children and Who's that? Beyonce is calling Blue the, Ivy. The well, children. I don't know. Yeah. Sir so, and something else. I, I think I, I remember. Yeah. And yeah. why is that on my feed? In oh, yeah. Shape, oh, form, right. fashion, <laughs> but I have, to, I have to agree. Um, I am a person that needs to check the gram every day. I need to check Instagram every day. It mm -hmm. is... And but it I becomes know, addictive, know, you know, yes. because you want to see, okay, you know, and it, it's constant new things. And therefore, I, I mean, I haven't read any neurological... Um, and research into this, but I'm sure it's training us to be more um, e attention deficit. Yes, because yes. yeah. it is shortening our attention spans yeah. to yeah. just that 30 second bite. Instagram that itself <laughs> says Instagram that. You, know, says, yeah. you have yeah, one minute that. video that you yes. can make, you know, get it done very quickly, you know, yeah. and mm -hmm. move on. So. But you see, you see, and I'm so glad that, you know, today um, we were able to get the opportunity to deal with four issues that mm -hmm. happen in marriage mm -hmm. technology domestic abuse, alcohol, um, alcoholism, um, infidelity, mm -hmm. and sometimes just losing pure interest in your marriage. I mean, those are things that every couple, every married person, you could be married, engaged, or just being together, that you experience. And I think a lot of times um, we face these challenges, but there's never really much um, being said or not much being addressed when it comes to these very hot topics, as they would say. You know, so as we come down to the last three minutes of the show, I have to admit, viewers, that I did have a wild card situation to bring to these gentlemen. They didn't know what, you know, mm. what the situation would have been. But unfortunately, we are running out of time. <laughs> so I guess for oh. another show, we could deal with Let's Talk Marriage Part 2. And maybe we can have Gina come on the set. And I'll it could ask. be Gina and me, Father Matthew and Nicholas, basically having a civil conversation about <laughs> different situations a that happen, you know, um, and how, you know, what information that they can share on it. I see Father Matthew is taking out his Amora Satisia mm. book here, and I feel like he's about to share. Just to share something. Sure, go well, ahead. I, I think I have it in my um, notes. Tablet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a little bit of technology. Just a little bit of technology there, so, guys. It's an Amoris Letitia 57. So let me, Go let me pull it up from the book. <laughs> yes, from the book. Right? Because the we quote... We only have three minutes left, Father. Sure. So. Okay, the Pope says, I thank God that many families, which are far from considering themselves perfect, live in love, fulfilling their call, and keep moving forward. You know? So people think sometimes, oh, look, you know, those Christians, they... they all they think about is a perfect marriage, you know. 
But no, there, there's no perfect man except Christ and the church, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, he says, the synod's reflection, so that's a gathering of bishops and their reflections, showed us there's no stereotype of the ideal family, but rather a challenging mosaic made up of different realities, with all their joys, all their hopes, and all their problems. The situations that concern us are challenges. We should not be trapped into wasting our energy into doleful laments, but rather seek new forms of missionary creativity. In every situation that presents itself, the church is conscious of the need to offer a word of truth and hope. And that's what we have to do. We have to order, offer truth, truth and, hope and hope to the yep. pain that we see. Mm -hmm. And truth and hope that we know comes from the grace of God. You know? um, truth and hope in the way we journey with each other. The great values of marriage and the Christian family correspond to a yearning that is part and parcel of the human existence. We long for communion. Right. So, Father, I'm sorry to cut you there. That's fine. Right. That was the end of it. But thank you. <laughs> the Amoris Titia book, you can also get it at the commission if you would like your own copy. Let me just say a special thanks to Nicholas. Thank you for joining thanks us. Thanks for having us, Lauren. And Father Matthew. And thank one you. last thing, please, taken from my Living a Joyful Marriage. Point to ponder before you leave. When we get stubborn in our own preferences, we miss the opportunity to see potential for growth in our relationship. Be patient. Love is a work in progress. Indeed yes? It is. So as we close yes. off this show, we just want to wish everyone a wonderful week. You know, keep us in prayers. Keep those victims from Hurricane Irma in your prayers as well. Definitely. You could contribute through, through and living the water. And, and the earthquake. And the earthquake and everything that's happening, you know. Um, keep them in prayer. And if you may need any information on the Family Life Commission or on these two gentlemen, you can always call us. And we are happy to help and serve you. So for, um, enjoy the rest of your week. Take care and bye-bye for now. <laughs>